despite their mounting financial problems, might be relieved just to survive as a league club. Quite a contrast, your commentator, Alan Perry. Sheffield Wednesday have reached the vital stage of their bid to return to the first division after an absence of 14 years. With eight games still to play at Hillsborough, Wednesday must be confident of winning promotion because of their impressive home record. These 12 players have appeared in most of Wednesday's home games, which have brought them 32 out of a possible 39 points. Defender Peter Shirtliff returns today after injury, but new signing Nigel Worthington, bought this week from Notts County, isn't fully fit and will watch from the stands. Charlton, who've enjoyed such a fine season despite all their financial worries, are only six points behind Sheffield Wednesday, but injury problems mean that they're down to just these 12 senior players. Still, it's a very experienced lineup with some prolific goal scorers. Hales, Moore, Flanagan, and Robinson have totaled more than 500 goals between them in senior football. Well, if it's anything like last season's game here between these two, we're in for quite a match. On that day, Charlton led 3-1 at half-time, but in an extraordinary turnabout, ended up losing 5-4. Sheffield Wednesday in the stripes, attacking from right to left, and they win an early free kick. Downman's foul on Cunningham. And virtually all the outfield players converging on that middle third of the field. This is Varadi for Sheffield Wednesday. Grit made it difficult for him, but he did well. Madden. Oh, and a snap out of Brad Bannister. It's a superb goal. Only five minutes gone, and Sheffield Wednesday take the lead. Imri Varadi helping to set it up with that fine run down the left, holding off Grit's challenge, playing it back for Madden. His cross was dangerous, but how well Bannister finished. So what a start for the team in second place in the second division table. Two points behind Chelsea at the start of play. They've got a couple of games in hand, Sheffield Wednesday. And that goal from their leading scorer, Gary Bannister, his 14th of the season, has given them a perfect start here. Today's referee, Arthur Robinson. Shelton, down and intercepts, here's Flanagan, Hazelwood, Smith happy to concede the throw, this is Ronnie Moore, back to him from Smith, Moore pulls it across goal and that could have been so dangerous, and Ronnie Moore then opted to pull it across goal rather than shoot himself and Wednesday relieved to see it go behind for a corner Cunningham got to it and what a great save that was from Hazelwood Cunningham it was who headed the ball clear but it went straight to Hazelwood who knocked it straight back in and Hodge made a fine save Martin Hodge who hasn't missed a game this season signed from Everton earlier in the season and in fine form Here's Bannister. Plenty of time to turn and find Cunningham. Varadi's in the centre. And he wins the corner. Lions flick away by Robinson. Straight to Sterling. Good run by Shelton. Here's Varadi. Hexen. So close. What superb football by Sheffield Wednesday. Well, a lot of people criticise Wednesday as a side who have only one tactic, getting the ball forward quickly and not playing good football. But here was an example of the football they can play. Hexen shot in the end over.
Hales got up well. Despite the uh, elbow, I think it was, from Shirtlift that caught him. Flanagan in the centre for Charlton here, but Madden won it. Here's Shelton with Hales still lying injured in the centre circle. Grit, Flanagan. Madden, no problem. And the referee has seen Derek Hales, the Charlton skipper. The play continues. But he stops it now to the uh, disgust of the home fans. But really, you can't take a risk when uh, somebody's had an elbow in the face. Accidental, as Hales did then. Peter Eustace, the first team coach here at Sheffield Wednesday, issuing the orders. Pearson, the substitute, just alongside him. Hales fit to resume. Play restarts with a drop ball, which Shelton wins very well. Now, Cunningham's pace proves superior to that of Grit. Bannister's cross. Megson coming in. Oh, it's hit the bar and away by Berry. Well, so close, Sheffield Wednesday then. Bannister working hard in that move down the left hand side after Shelton won the drop ball. Megson's header against the bar. Charlton relieved. John's coming to claim it again. And both sides doing away with midfield play in the main. Cunningham, Kevin Smith, and Hazelwood. Good ball, Hales. Now a big gap opens up. Can he finish? The crowd provide an adequate commentary to a piece of finishing that Derek Hales won't be proud of. It was a good ball forward. Sheffield Wednesday's marking was all astray. And one of the most consistent goal scorers in the Football League, but he shot all wrong. Cunningham up well. Flying back to headed clear. Good battling here by Kevin Smith. And he gets the free kick. Quickly taken by Charlton. Too quickly, says the ref. shot oh well again Hale's really got it all wrong and he's been in two good positions a good header down by Ronnie Moore and Hales has been in two good positions now has wasted them both Hazelwood turns it forward straight to Sterling though shirt lift on Flanagan and he uh, was a judge to have been elbowed in the back by Madden Flanagan Smith Hales coming in again would you believe it he's missed a hat-trick of good chances a suspicion of offside as it was turned forward then by Smith but Hales completely in the clear and unmarked, hurried his shot. Well, he's smiling now, but I'm not sure he will be when Lenny Lawrence, the manager, has a word with him at half-time. Well, the end of a strange first half. Two teams who largely ignored midfield play in favour of getting the ball forward as quickly as possible. Manister's early goal giving Sheffield Wednesday the lead. But his opposite number, the number eight for Charlton, Derek Hales, could literally have had three since then. Sheffield Wednesday one, Charlton nil.
I know most people think commentators have got bad eyesight, but this is ridiculous. It's Sheffield Wednesday's familiar symbol, the owl, keeping a beady eye on their form today. And like everyone else here, keeping one eye on the first division. And certainly if Wednesday do go up, they'll take massive support. The average attendance at Hillsborough this season, over 23,000. So Wednesday defending that one goal lead. Charlton seventh at the start of play, but a win could take them into third place. A win that can only come if their finishing is a lot better though than it was in the first half. And here's the man responsible for the worst misses, Derek Hales. Back to Flanagan. Robinson was offside. Ahead of my Dowman. Shelton onto it quickly. Berardi. Well, he really struck it with some force. Shelton involved in the build up. Berardi quickly in space and used his pace to get into a shooting position, but hit his shot wide. Hales up. Smith forward, Madden's interception, Cunningham gets in behind the defence, and what a brilliant save, what a brilliant save by Johns, Cunningham got in behind the defence, held off Dowman's challenge, the shot looked bound for the top of the net, Johns made sure it's a corner. What a lively old start to the second half. Ronnie Moore gets it clear, straight back to Megson though. Cunningham up well, and it's in. Shirtlift diving full length on the line to turn the ball in. And poor Nicky Johns, who'd made that brilliant save, is beaten from the resulting corner. Cunningham heading it back across the face of goal. Shirtlift diving forward, it's 2-0 to Sheffield Wednesday. Very, very difficult job on here. Sheffield Wednesday, one of the most prolific scorers at home in the division. Charlton's scoring record away from home is very poor. And they could be facing another uphill hurdle here. Cunningham, it's 3-0. Well, just as I was about to say it, Cunningham proved it. 3-0, the break down the left, two goals in the space of a minute. It was so easy when the ball came in. Cunningham just had to side foot it into the corner of the net. What a turnaround. And Charlton are really under pressure now. Hillsborough has really come alive. Megson straight against Hazelwood. The referee having a word with uh, the Charlton player. And suddenly. Charlton's afternoon is collapsing all about them. 3-0 the scoreline, and you can see how little has gone in the second half. Smith with the free kick. Wednesday in the mood for more goals. Berardi. Lions back to Berardi. And Grit made sure he didn't get another. and gets a foot in. Sterling intercepting. To the right is Berardi. Sterling again, and it comes to Bannister. What a fine save by Johns. 
Sheffield Wednesday looked likely to score another then and banished a shot that earned another fine save by Nicky Johns. Moore's clearance. Good interception by Kevin Smith. Well, everybody left it to each other. Makes them forward, Cunningham, great pace. Penalty. It had to be. Nicky Johns out so quickly to try and match the devastating pace of Tony Cunningham. The inevitable conclusion as goalkeeper and striker met a penalty. 15 minutes gone then in the second half. And Mel Sterling, who scored the winner from the penalty spot against Coventry in the recent FA Cup tie here, with an opportunity to put the points well beyond Charlton's reach, if they're not already. Sterling against Johns. Well, he really hit it with some power, but Nicky Johns, who's having a remarkable day, turned it over. Sterling hitting that one, very central, but very hard, Nicky Johns a reaction save. Hales away. Here's Sterling, he'll be angry. He'll want to uh, avenge that mistake. And he nearly did so. Johns denies him again. Shirt left clear. Hales on, more shirt lip intercepts, but Flanagan nips in to take it. Oh, good ball for Moore. Unlucky for Charlton. Flanagan's cross from the left. Moore headed it. So Charlton have certainly had their opportunities to score today. surely are clinched for the home side it's a strange thing about Charlton their home record is as good as any team in the whole of the league their away form lets them down the referee says play on Parade Nixon's in the centre John's safe pair of hands this is Smith Robinson, Charlton to their credit have kept going, Smith, Robinson offside, no, more, and Sheffield Wednesday angry as Ronnie Moore does a victory jig, and certainly there was a suspicion that Robinson was offside, the referee looked at it as he slid the ball in the middle, Ronnie Moore side footed it in, and Charlton get a goal back. Wednesday 4, Chalk Athletic 1. But Wednesday will be convinced that offside should have been the verdict then. Still, the way they play, they know there's always a risk. Forward by Shirtliff. Very under pressure from Berardi. Dickinson. What a great job this man has done in his first season in charge at Sheffield Wednesday. Howard Wilkinson, the manager. Might not be a very happy weekend for Charlton, apart from losing here today. They face another high court hearing on Monday about their future. 
their future in this game is assured. They're going to lose. Could it be 5 1 though? Sterling. Nicky Johns, who on the day has conceded four goals, but has played superbly, made another save. Well, that would have been amazing if it had gone in, but it didn't. And so the match ends up with a 4-1 victory. Ronnie Moore scored at the right end to slightly dent the scoreline as far as Sheffield Wednesday were concerned. It may not be everyone's idea of how to play football. Two teams have got the ball forward as quickly as possible. But it made for great excitement, for goal-mouth incident galore, for five goals and a missed penalty as well, remember. Sheffield Wednesday surely are a team on their way to a higher level of football next season. 4-1 winners today. Well, I've complained more than once that too often in modern football the ball's locked in midfield, but that certainly wasn't the case in that match, nor indeed in the first one. And if games were played like that across the board, I'm sure attendances would improve dramatically.